a miscalculation was made by homosexuality at its finest on AO3. Summary. Izuku Midoriya wanted to have one normal field trip. Just one. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently so, because his older brother Tomaru is now invading the USJ with a ton of villains and a no moo in tow. He was going to show Tomaru and Pa what real fear was for ruining this trip. From a young age, Midoriya Izuku and Midoriya Inko knew that the patriarchy and the oldest son of the household were involved in some not-so-legal activity. It was hard not to know when the two would just show up at 3am drenched in blood and casually discussing a drug deal they just finished. But the mom and the youngest child brushed it off. They were family, and they loved them. Midoriya Hasashi was Izuku's pa. He loved his father more than anything, and the two could talk about quirks for hours if they weren't interrupted, and when a young four-year-old Izuku had developed his pa's quirk, being able to take and give quirks as he pleased, well, his pa had been ecstatic. His pa had gifted Izuku with a few quirks to protect his youngest one, called Familiar Calling, which could teleport any family he pleased to his exact location in case of an emergency. Along with family calling came healing quirks, minor speed and ability quirks, and so on. Tomaru, Izuku's oldest brother, was always supportive and loving when it came to Izuku. He took a suggestion when it came to his rather difficult and destructive quirk, always thanking the younger of the two with a kiss on the forehead. That was until Pa's unavoidable battle with All Might, the man had used to be Izuku's favorite hero, but when he took Pa away, it had been unforgivable. Pa and Tomaru had to go to hiding. Pa had to get strong and find a quirk that could heal him so that he could be with his family once more. They didn't mean that Izuku and Inko didn't visit the pair quite regularly. Getting well acquainted with Tomaru, who was a nomu in charge of catering to Tomaru's needs, may have. Izuku adored Komaru and called him Uncle Girl and always chatted away about the Miss Man's quirk. This routine carried on for years until the fateful day when Izuku had encountered All Might. He may hate the hero now, but he was still the number one hero and he asked the question that had plagued him since his quirk had developed. Can someone with a villainous quirk be a hero? And that piece of shit had shot him down, told him to be more realistic, that the hero industry would chew him up and spit him out. It broke in the teenager's heart beyond belief, but when he saw Kachan, someone who bullied him menacingly since childhood under the assumption he had a weak healing quirk, in trouble, he couldn't help but involve himself. He ignores the heroes crying out after him as he fought tooth and nail to save his best friend turned bully from the sludge. And suddenly All Might was there, blowing the sludge villain away with a single punch. Time passed on as a blur as a Viridian-eyed boy, the scalding from the heroes falling on death ear, and when he finally escaped, he wanted nothing more to fall into Pa's arms and cry his heart out. Then All Might had appeared once more, told him that he could be a hero, and offered him his quirk. Izuku, of course, knew about All Might's quirk, the history behind it. He knew more about it than All Might did. Pushing apart any thoughts that told him not to, he accepted the quirk, and while he trained his body to be able to handle it, he didn't speak a word of it to his family. That's probably how he got in this situation, honestly. After accepting the quirk, getting into UA, the quirk assessment and the breaking in the day before, Izuku didn't think the Lady Fate could throw any more curveballs at him. That train of thought is probably the reason why Lady Fate decided to laugh in his face and make the entire situation happen. He'd been at USJ, vibrating besides Uduraka and Shinso as he chattered on about the facility. Thirteen's quirk and everything that was going through his head with the familiar purple mist appeared around the fountain in the middle of the plaza. His stomach twisted uncomfortably, and he just knew that this was about to be a complete shit show. Out came Tomaru, Anomu, and Kirigiri, the only three who recognized in a large crowd of villains. Indonation rose in the teenager's chest. How dare they come here and ruin his field trip? He'd been talking about it since he found out. Pa and Tomo knew how excited he was at this field trip, yet they pulled this shit? Izuku let out a low growl, shoveled past his fellow classmates and past his teacher, easily dodging Aizawa Sensei's capture weapon. Whether the criminals could feel the murderous intent coming off of Izuku or Tomaru had something to say to them, he didn't know. But the villains parted like the Red Sea as he stomped down the steps and towards his brother and uncle. 
Uncle Grill gave Izuku a small bow as the teenager approached, appearing as meek as a man made of miss could. I apologize, young Izuku. I tried to dish away your father and brother, but they insisted. Izuku radiated green eyes, moved away from Kurikuri, and landed on his older brother. What in the name of Kama do you think you're doing, Midoriya Tomaru? Sweat dripped down the villain's neck as he looked at his little brother. Izuku never called him by his full name unless he was pissed. Tomaru put a hand up to scratch his neck nervously, but was stopped by Izuku clasping his wrist gently. No scratching. Now, answer the question before I use Familia calling and bringing Mama into this. Oh, fuck. Tama would rather go to Tacharis than deal with Mom being mad at him. Dad wanted to attack all my at USJs. I broke into your school and found the schedule yesterday, but he's not here. Please don't call Mom, Sue. I'm, I'm begging you. Izuku took a deep breath, looking up at the ceiling at UA as if praying to whatever deity for patience. Here's what's gonna happen. Uncle Grill is gonna send all these low lives who were fully prepared to traumatize kids back to whatever the fuck they came from. I'm gonna have a nice little chat with my teacher, which may get me expelled because you and dad are fucking assholes who, luckily, I don't kill. And then I'm gonna go to the lab and I'm gonna summon mom and we're gonna have a nice family conversation. Is that understood? Tamara opened his mouth to protest and Izuku's eyes flared a toxic green, daring his older brother to deny him. The blue-haired man nodded shamefully and looked at Kirigiri and nodded in conf confirmation. Get that fucking Nomu out of my sight before I rip his brains out. The Nomu was gone in an instant, as were the rest of the villains, leaving Izuku, Tomaru, and Kurguri standing at the fountain. Izuku's class and the teacher were gasping at the green-haired child who was shaking from barely suppressing fury. Aizawa-sensei, this is my brother Tomaru and my uncle Kurguri. I'll be back to explain everything in a bit, but I have a family discussion I need to attend to and possibly unplug my father's ventilator. Aizawa opened and closed his mouth, but couldn't say anything before the problem child disappeared into a purple warp gate, leaving a class of 19 and two teachers staring at where they once stood. Aizawa slowly brought his hands up to take off his ga goggles before... Leaving a class of 19 and two teachers staring at where they once stood, Aizawa slowly brought his hands up to take off his goggles before turning to 13. What the fuck just happened? When the trio arrived at the lab, Izuku was no longer hiding his fury, glaring daggers at his brother who was shifting anxiously from where he stood. Kurguri had filed as soon as they arrived, leaving his master in charge of the wolf. Angry Inko and Izuku was something he wished to not experience. I, uh, I'll go get Dad. Damn right you will, Izuku hissed in response, watching as his brother scurried off to retrieve their father. In the meantime, he used familiar calling to bring his ma to the lab. Said woman appeared beside him. She took a second to gather her bearings before pressing a kiss to her son's temple. What did your father and brother do this time, sweetie? They attacked my school, and they were ready to traumatize myself and my classmates, possibly kill us for the sake of killing All Might. Izuku replied, in a desperately chipper voice, receiving a hum from Inko. Is that so? When All for One and Tomaru arrived, both looking terrified, the mother and son were standing side by side, glares leveled on their loved ones. Hitachi, Tomaru, she greeted, ice cold as steel. Hi, Ma, Tomaru replied meekly, trying to shrink beside his father. H Hello, darling, what do I owe this pleasure of seeing my beautiful wife and son? The most luxurious supervillain of all time quivered under his wife and son's glare, both angry and proud of Tomaru for offering him up as the sacrificial lamb. Well, it seems yourself and Tomaru thought it would be a good idea to attack Izuku's class, so now we're going to sit down and have a family discussion, she replied, giving the father and son a terrified smile. Both men gulped, but sat down obediently. It was better to not anger her more. If later that day Izuku came skipping back into class, a chipper smile on his face, and greeting everyone as if nothing had happened, well, everyone at UA was just gonna have to get used to the peculiars of Midoriya Izuku and his fucked up lineage. I wonder how that whole ordeal is gonna unravel when uh, All for One realizes that Izuku has one for all. You know, that that's going to be a very interesting family dinner for sure. Make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, and have a wonderful day or night. And thank you for watching.